All right, I want to make a video today to illustrate the importance of horizontal and vertical cover for rough grouse, specifically around a drumming log. Now, I'm on my property where I have seen rough grouse in the past, but candidly, the log that we're going to use as an example, I don't know if this is an actual drumming log, but I, I want to use this log just to paint a picture and use as a teaching tool why it's so important to have horizontal and vertical cover around a potential drumming log. Uh, site and if you look 360 degrees around this part of our property it was clear cut about 30 years ago and you can see a lot of stems you can see a lot of trees you would think that there's a lot of cover there's some overhead cover a little bit there's a little hole up there but you see all these stems it's a little shrubby a little brushy and 360 degree view you might look and think and say, oh, well, there's decent cover in here. If a rough grouse were up on this log, he, he could feel pretty safe and secure. The number one predator for a rough grouse are actually avian predators, hawks, owls, mainly your woodland hawks, sharp shins, and cooper's hawks. And again, you pan around and you look at all, all the stems. It's a little shrubby, it's a little brushy. You might think that this is decent enough cover for a grouse to get up here to drum, to do his thing, and to find himself a girlfriend, hopefully. When in reality, that this area could use quite a bit of work. Those sharp shins and, and Cooper's hawks, they're such skillful flyers. It's really impressive to watch them cruise through the timber. When a grouse is doing his courtship, when he is drumming, obviously his mind is elsewhere. He's making a lot of noise. And a woodland hawk could easily cruise right through here, also an owl, and, and pluck this poor grouse off the drumming log and just turn him into a big pile of feathers in no time. So what we're going to do, I'm going to just cut some trees around this area and show what it looks like now prior to doing some cutting and then what it looks like after when you're just cutting a few trees, what it can do to add some cover for the grouse, vertical and horizontal. And I want to show from, I want to use a drone to kind of show a POV as how easily a hawk could fly right through here. I'm going to use this log as an example and fly right through and, and pluck a grouse off this drumming log if one were here. A little bit of work can go a long way uh, to protect a grouse on a drumming log and hopefully help him see another day. All right, I'm standing right here where I'm gonna fly the drone from and first we'll do a before shot. And if you look right through here, right at the top of my finger is right where we were just now sitting right beside that potential drumming log site. And again, I don't know if it actually is a drumming log, but there are a lot of logs behind me from where this piece of property was clear cut that if they are not logs now it's very likely they were in the past or hopefully they will be in the future but I just picked this spot because I can fly the drone through here and it's important to keep in mind obviously that a sharp shin or a cooper's hawk red tail even an owl they're obviously more skillful flyers flying through timber than I am with a drone if I can easily fly my drone through here imagine how easy it is for an avian predator when it's actually looking for food. So I'm just gonna cut some trees behind me. I'm gonna flush cut some trees so we can get some stump sprouts, get some vertical cover. I'm actually gonna hinge cut some trees. Eric and I have never been big hinge cutting people. We've always said that there's a place for it. And I think this is actually one of the places for it because a lot of the thing is with the grouse around here, they don't really have a lot of time to wait for that forest regeneration, six to eight years to, for it to get real stemmy. So if I can create some cover immediately that is going to be horizontal and since the hinge cut tree is going to stay alive and continue to grow vertical if i can do that around a drumming log then hopefully that will um, buy the grouse some time and I, we won't have to wait as long for that region to get those stems per acre that your typical grouse habitat uh, would typically look like but anyway going to fire up the saw we're going to do a before shot and then after we cut some trees we'll show you an after
I will consider that mission accomplished. The only bad thing is I can't fly my drone through here. This was our starting point. Drumming log is at the top of my finger. And I wanted to do it before and after uh, flying the same lane with a drone to see what horizontal and vertical cover can do for a grouse on a drumming log. Um, but unfortunately, it's too thick and brushy uh, in there now. Bad news for the video, good news for the grouse. But I am going to try to do a walkthrough just so you can kind of see what we accomplish. There's a lot of green briar in here, which is exciting to see. Obviously, it's going to get more sunlight from the hole in the canopy. I flush cut a lot of trees. I hinge cut a lot of trees, which my hinge cuts probably aren't very good. Flush cutting the trees, we'll get some stump sprouts, some vertical cover. There'll be mineral stumps for deer. The hinge cuts, like I said, we're never been big hinge cut guys. We've always said there are, is a place. And again, I think this is a place for a hinge cut because they'll stay alive. You have that immediate horizontal cover. And then obviously with the hole in the canopy, they'll try to grow up. And then you'll get some vertical shoots and some vertical cover off of the hinge cut that way as well. And you can just see all the branches, the brush through this area from trees that we cut. Like I said, the hole in the canopy will create a flush of, especially in here, a lot of green briar. I'm hoping some brambles, blackberry, hopefully some native grasses. But here we are at the drumming log and you can see a 360 degree view with all the trees that we laid over and the brush and this isn't a quick fix obviously the trees the tops on the ground do provide some immediate cover but we're opening a hole in the canopy these trees are going to stump sprout we'll get a flush of growth stump sprouts higher stem count which will increase the just overall cover around this potential drumming log and we're just making management decisions with rough grouse at the forefront in this area the whole area needs a lot of work we mainly cut yellow poplar tulip poplar of which there are in excess in this area but again just thinking about rough grouse i know there are some in this area and you know i left a lot of black gum we'll leave black gum in, in this area for soft mass cherry for soft mass. We'll release our white oaks and our red oaks for hard mass. So it's just thinking through it, each decision we're making and how can it benefit rough grouse. I know white tails are gonna benefit from the work that we did today for sure, but a more sensitive species like rough grouse whose numbers are declining, every little bit we can do, every management decision that we make can be helpful and make a difference. And they certainly need our help right now. Like I said, I don't know if this is a drumming log, honestly. It, it may have been one in the past. If we can build back numbers, hopefully it will be one in the future. But this video was just to create a visual, use this as an illustration to how important horizontal and vertical cover are to a drumming log for a grouse and how easily it can be accomplished. We were in here for maybe an hour and between hinge cut and flush cut trees, it was probably 20 trees we put on the ground. But every little bit we can do for the rough grouse, makes a difference i'm excited to see hopefully go for a walk this spring and, and hear a rough grouse drumming in this area that would be that would be icing on the cake but just as it is for you it is for me wildlife it's our way of life